Hello my friends, John LaRuffy here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, we are going to take a look at Age of Inventors. I'm going to show you how to play solo. I'm going to show you kind of the game kind of midway through so you get a feel for it. And then I'm going to let you know what I think. All right, let's get started. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you have, I really do appreciate that support. Thank you very much. All right, so what you see here is a game just kind of halfway through or so the third of four rounds, all right? I'm playing solo. And the only thing that happens in the solo game is, as far as I can tell from the very brief rule section, you set up your opponent's markers over here on the scoring track, and then you start with his marker in the front on the ingenuity track so that he effectively is like the first player. And... He would stay there unless you bump it up like I bump it up. That's it. There's no other interaction with anything regarding the solo um, that I could tell. And the solo rules are very brief. And I'll show you here. Right. Let's see. Right here. Literally, it just tells you a couple of things for setup. A couple of things from a special uh, rule standpoint um, and then how you're gonna handle your scoring okay and that's really it all right the rest of the game plays normally like you play a two-player game okay so you're basically taking all the actions there isn't an opponent taking any other actions there's none of that it's just you kind of trying to achieve a high score and this is a beat your own score style uh, solo mode so let's go ahead and talk about the two types of actions you can take you could take actions with your uh, research assistants over here, and one of them has been set aside due to the choice I chose in the random time to play event card that starts the round. And basically the way that goes is when you begin the upkeep phase, you flip over those cards, you make a choice of what permanent effect is gonna go into play for this round, either the one on the left or the one on the right. I chose the one on the right, which said, do it with one play the game or this round with one extra one fewer lab assistants so you have lab assistant actions and what you could do basically with those is you can put them on this action here to get a resource of your choice you can put them on one of your lab equipment uh, pieces to get whatever the situation is in case in this case it's change one resource into a different one or just gain a resource or change a green into a different one those are the types of lab equipment that i've gotten so far in the game or you could take your lab assistant, you could put it on one of these inventors, okay, and that will give you some other resource conversion. Or you could take your lab assistant and put it over here and take one of these experiment tiles. And what this basically does is it'll be worth one point at the end of the game, or if you pay four resources of any kind, it will be worth some other amount of points. I think maybe two to four. I've drawn a couple of twos so far. And I can verify that, I guess, looking at the stack here. Do I have anything else? That's a three. So there's there's a little bit of variation in there. You don't know what you're going to get. Or you can play here to refresh either the inventor uh, offer or the invention offer. You basically pay $2 to refresh those. And then you have these switch actions, which you have four of them. And the switch actions, you could do one of four things. You flip a switch. You can draw an inventor. And when you draw an inventor, you put it in your hand, like I have over here. You get the inventor tile, and you also put that in your hand. But you don't play it yet. You can flip a switch and play the inventor, where you basically will take the tile, put it anywhere on the board, as long as it's not adjacent to another inventor. And you're trying to spatially surround these inventors with the right color inventions. They have to match. The color invention has to match. In order for them to retire, when they retire, you would draw some of these out of the bag. However, in the solo mode, you don't draw these out of the bag. And these are variable victory points. They're like one to three, depending on what you draw out. Um, so the retirement aspect is not as important in this solo mode as it is to try to gain an edge on some points. However, with her, I'm gonna draw one anyway because it says when that person's retired, you draw one. So I feel like that's part of the bonus. But these inventors allow you to do other things. They give you special abilities that are um, that that tip the scales in your favor to do something easier. Sometimes you can activate them. Like this one says, activate them to gain a conversion of any unavailable inventor. So that means to me, 
I look through the stack and I find a conversion I like and I can take it. Whereas this one says, uh, turn it over and use a switch to place two inventors instead of one. So there's, there's a lot of those different abilities there, okay? Then you could flip a switch to take one of the invention tiles and that's where you spend these ideas to acquire an invention tile and put it over on the side like I have these two over here. And you can flip a switch to place an invention tile and when you place it, you have to pay all the resources in the left. You will gain the benefits on the three invention tracks, one or the other or the other, um, on the uh, on those scores over there, depending on what it says here. So for instance, if I played rockets, I'd have to pay two of the green, one of the orange, and one of the blue. Then I would get three on the industrial track, essentially beating, in this case, beating out him and then scoring the maximum category, which would be eight points, okay, for my end score. And then I have to place this on a spot that is adjacent to a green inventor, okay? So they kind of unlock the places. And, and this would be the only place I can play it based on the way the board is configured right now, all right? And then I would get whatever that bottom thing is. And in this case, the bottom thing says you take um, an invention tile, you steal it from the opponents that are below you on the ingenuity track. So in this case, I take it from the top because I don't have any opponents. Okay. All uh, right. So you also have funds here, and this is basically your money. You use your money to pay for this action over here where you refresh to pay for that and also to draft. And then there's some other conversions. Sometimes you, you know, you can use them to, for special abilities, etc. So you have, that's the, the resources you're really juggling here. You've got money, ideas, and three types of building resources to make your inventions, all right? So, I basically explained the entire game as far as I can think of it. Um, so, I'll show you a couple of turns, but you can almost use what I just said as a tutorial to learn how to play the game, except I didn't go through the upkeep phase uh, in detail, which I will show you kind of at the end of this, and it actually makes sense to do it that way. All right, so I've got three of my... Uh, lab assistants left and I have two switch actions to take and like I said well like I was kind of hinting at retiring these guys isn't necessarily that important in a solo game that I can tell except that you would get more abilities but you don't get a lot of extra points for it so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to maximize the in inventions I put down to go to the top of those tracks so that I can score the most points so in order to do that let's go ahead and uh, consider playing the rockets like I told you about earlier. So, in order to play rockets, I have to turn one of my switches to the on position. Then I have that green spot over here. I have to pay two of these, I think they're biology, two of the biology, maybe that's what they are. No, two of the chemistry, that's right, those are chemistry, one of the engineering and one of the physics to pay, because why would you need biology for rockets? To pay for the rockets, there we go. And so now, because I built that, first I would get an invention from him, and I'm just gonna take it off the top of the stack. It's a green. I haven't seen any of the blue ones, they gotta be in here, I just must have not shuffled them very well. Um, so it's a green invention, which really does me no good, unfortunately, with the way things are, and the ones I have here. So there we go, I have that. And then I get to go up three on the industrial track. Well, that puts me at the top, all right? And this would also, in a, in, now I get this right here, which allows me to make a conversion of, I, I th basically what this does is I can spend industry for anything else, or the engineering for anything else. I believe that's what it is, I just verify that. I don't wanna give you the wrong impression. Um, you go to the top and I will say that I have spent a little bit longer than I feel like I should have in this rule book. Okay. So the industrial allows you to use engineering resources, resources a while for any other ones that you place when you're, when you're playing, paying to place inventions. So basically now since I've acquired this, I get to use that to count as anything else. Unfortunately, I don't have any more of those, but if I wanted to like this, for instance, I could go ahead and I could place this here and get one. All right, and I could also place this here if I wanted to get another, but we're just gonna save, stay right there for a moment. The other thing I can do is I can use his conversion to get more industrial resources. 
So to do that, I will put my guy over here and then I will go ahead and pay one idea and get two engineering or industrial, whatever they are, resources, okay? And then um, that does not turn this. I could also turn this and I would be able to use that special ability, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. That doesn't help me. I will flip my file switch here this turn to place down this right here. And this is stainless steel. So that cost me, oh, and because of my bonus here, I should have gotten two extra funds because of this specific bonus. Okay, then I'm gonna pay the three um, industrial or engineering and then one chemistry to get this. That puts me three up here, so that's one, two, three. I get this resource. I get to reverse a switch, which is good because switches seem like they are the best of actions. You only have four of them. So I reverse a switch, and then I get to draw two experiments from the top of the deck, and hopefully one of these two will be blue. All right, finally. So I got a blue one, lightning rod. And it just so happens I have what I need to do the lightning rod right now. So I will spend that final switch, pay these two, and put this down over here. Okay, and that will let me either get three and everybody else get one, but I would just get the three. One, two, and three. And then I would get a bump on this track right there. Okay, now what do I have left? I have one more scientist, or sorry, research guy. And since I don't know what I'm gonna do with these, I don't need these, and I don't even have a person or card. I could get more of those, but that seems like it wouldn't necessarily be the right thing to do. I'm probably going to use him to simply refresh and try to get some more blue because that's what I need. So I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna spend two. I'm gonna take these away and I'm gonna hope for some more blue tiles. I had plenty of orange and green come up. They're all, I think, an equal number. Just have, oh, that's an orange. It's another orange. Maybe they're not an equal number. And that's an orange, okay, well. Hmm, so what that means is, is that maybe I need to focus on putting him out so that I can build some more of those and try, but see, the thing is, I'm already at the top of the, indus the industrial track, so I don't need any of those inventions. I really need to build these green ones, don't I? Because that would get me the educational track over there. So that's kind of what I would do going into my final round. Now, just to show you the, upgrade, the upkeep phase, once you're done, then the first thing you do is you collect back all your assistants. All right. Then I reset my switches. Okay. Then I increase the round counter to four. I draw new breaking news. So this is what it, it gives you some information on something that happened way back when. And then it'll give me a choice. I can either activate all of those things, whatever those are, or I can, all players can gain one of each resource. I'm just going to gain one of each resource just for the sake of time here. And that is the event, so to speak. Okay. And then I'm going to earn funds based on ingenuity. Well, I'm at the top. That means one fund. and then draft equipment. So first things I do is I move these over, then I will put this out. And now I have a choice of equipment to take. So I can do this for two funds, one fund or zero funds. And basically where I see the need now is probably to do the cheap one because it lets me turn one into whatever I want. Okay, so I'll do that and that's free. And then this, covering this up, lets me take the top inventor from here, Albert Einstein. Okay, so what I would do is I would find Albert Einstein's tile in here somewhere, somewhere else. Here we go. 
Albert Einstein. Now what he lets me do is convert one of any one thing to three of another. So that's a pretty handy conversion. And I could turn it and says, this turn you may use two switches. Uh, so it kind of like in a multiplayer game, that would give me a bit of an edge. So you'd be able to do something a little faster than anybody else. Okay, so then when I've done that, then I activate all my lab equipment. So I get all this stuff for free. So let's go ahead and get one. Looking at what we're going to do here, um, I have plenty of engineering resources. I don't have a lot of those uh, chemistry resources. So let's get a chemistry for this one. I could then turn a chemistry into something else. So I might as well, since I just did, well, I'll turn this into another chemistry. And then I'll turn a chemistry into a blue and I'll turn this into another chemistry. All right, so that activates all four of those. And then you basically play that one more round looking for that high score. And you're gonna do it with four lab assistants and four of these switch actions. All right, I think that gives you a really good understanding of what this game has to offer. The spatial kind of placement puzzle that's going out there, the conversions and the tracks. Now, when you're scoring, when you're scoring for this game, you're gonna score based on your uh, tracks up here. You're gonna score eight points for being the top. And in this game, since you're playing um, solo, it's either eight or four. You're gonna score for your ingenuity track. You're going to then score for the, um, um, do, do, do. what is the other stuff? But these right here, so if you if you don't flip them over, they're just one point. If you spend four resources to flip them over, you might get some more points. And let me just look at the solo to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, victory point track, experiment tracking, one for every five funds. Okay, yeah, five, for every five funds. And that's it. And then you're gonna try to beat your high score. Okay, let me let you know what I think about it. All right, so hopefully that gave you a good understanding of what this game looks like, what the game feels like, how it plays. Now, this is what I'll say. First of all, I think that this game would be a lot of fun multiplayer because it seems to me that the way that you're trying to edge out your opponent is going to be very much dependent on the small little bits of gains you have. Notice, you don't really score anything directly for placing inventions. You don't really score anything in the solo mode for retiring your inventors. You do score for retiring the inventors in the multiplayer, okay? But that's variable. It could be one, two, or three points. So there's a little bit of chance there. The big part of the scoring in this game is trying to get to the top of those tracks and secure your lead there first so that you can nail that eight point and then hope for other ones. And the rest of it is all subtle little things here and there. And that's where I feel like this game does not cut the mustard from a solo standpoint because there's just no understanding of what a good score is. Not only that, it's pretty obvious. I got to max out all three of those tracks. So the inventions I'm going to be getting are going to be to max out all three of them. And I have to the end of the game to do so because the solo opponent doesn't do anything. I can easily get the max score from just bumping up my guy to the top in the ingenuity track once. I don't get anything for retiring anybody. And I get some leftover stuff from having more money and everything else. I find that extremely underwhelming. And I feel like I was a bit hoodwinked on this one from a solo standpoint, not gonna lie. I definitely feel like this game was made for multiplayer the solo was an afterthought. Even the setup, uh, even the stuff in the solo is very, very limited on what they, they don't really tell you a whole lot. First of all, they say select a corporation trading firm. So I had to ask, well, can I play with anything else or whatever? And the response I got was the trading firm, if you select that, it keeps everybody on the same uh, playing field to compare scores. So they're assuming that I'm going to be comparing a score to somebody else, but they don't give me any kind of stratification that I can tell on what a good score is. They don't give me a, you know, 20, you're a lab rat, 25, you're a stepping stool, 26, you're this, you know what I mean? It's like, they don't give me any of that. So I don't even know what I'm really working for. And I, I don't mind beat your own scores at all, but I like a goal, a lofty goal to say, this is what you got to hit to be proud of your game. This doesn't even attempt that. 
I just, I don't know. I feel like I am going to not be able to play this very often solo because there's just not a whole lot there. Multiplayer, I could definitely see the subtleties. I could see the fun there. And it's too bad because I think the theme is kind of fun and interesting. The spatial puzzle's not so bad. Um, there's, there's a little bit of that as far as, you know, where you're going to place. But again, all that would shine the multiplayer, not here in the solo because it's just too predictable. The only thing that you have to worry about is that are those draw spots with regards to the, um, the inventors and the inventions. And in that regard, I feel like you have these lab assistants that can help with conversions and such, but really where you feel the angst or the, I, I don't say the angst because I don't feel like there's a lot of angst in this game, unfortunately, because I like angst in my solo games, but this one was kind of overflowing with different things. Um, those four switch actions are your limiting factor in how much you're going to get done. So you're obviously going to want to make sure that you do them as efficiently as possible, but your choices of efficiency aren't, I mean, in a, in a, let's just say in a perfect situation, you might be able to get one red, one green, and one orange inventor, put them in the middle of the board, and then have the ability to surround them with up to six different inventions, which you're probably not going to have to worry about resetting that inventory thing that much, even do that. I mean, if they're well mixed, you, I think you're going to be okay. You know, I was at, at first kind of thinking I got to retire these things, but then it kind of dawned on me like, well, wait, I don't even get any special bonuses for retiring. So I think this is a huge miss on the solo standpoint. And you know that I don't usually say that. I'm not usually that uh, definitive or negative, but I, I just don't see a lot of upside here. I think this game could be great multiplayer. And if I played multiplayer games, I would definitely keep it. I would teach it to people and I would play it. I think I'd have fun, but that's not me. This is a solo channel because I play solo games and well... Here we are. So I do not recommend this at all for solo unless you want to invest a lot of time into trying to beat your own best score by like little, little bits of increments. And maybe if that's you, that's great. But um, it's not me. So anyway, that's the story. I usually am not so definitively down on something like this, especially Something that looks good, something that appeals. And then there's just, I guess the other thing that I, I wish this play, this game had thrown in a little bit more. These player, these little upkeep phase and things like that, these cards are okay. But in 2024, I'll say, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You've got to turn the back of the book into a player aid. You could have put the entire game on this on the back here. Instead, there's this list of inventions, which is cool. This totally didn't have to need to be in the back. This could have been in this place right here. In this place right here, kind of sort of okay index, but also very useless. And I'm sorry, I looked up, cause I'm like, well, what are the ideas spent for? Cause I forgot, so I went to page five. All right, guess what's on page five for ideas? So page five for ideas is the components list. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Sorry this was a bit of a negative review, but that's what I got. A negative taste in my mouth on this one. So there it is. Maybe if you're going to play a multiplayer, you'll enjoy it. You'll have more fun. But I don't think that'll be the case from a solo standpoint. All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Whatever you decide to do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.